Hey guys, this is Matt with bleepinjeep.com and today we've got a few things that we need to paint here uh, as you can see. By the end of the day, by the end of this video I might have gone a little loopy and lost all of my brain cells but uh, I've made a little list here to try and get through this. Before we get started, check out my website bleepinjeep.com We've got t-shirts just like this one and more, all kinds of cool videos and other things. So check it out bleepinjeep.com. To find these parts and more, uh, check out jcroffroad.com. They sell bumpers and armors, all kinds of other great stuff, so check them out jcroffroad.com. Do subscribe to both of our YouTube channels and Facebook pages. Okay, let's get started. Alright guys, so the first thing you want to do is make a nice clean work area. Uh, I've got this table here, I've cleaned it off. I've also swept all the dust out of here, let the dust settle. I've actually moved a Jeep out of the garage here um, because we're going we're gonna to be spraying this here in a little bit and those fine uh, spray particles are going to settle eventually and I don't want them uh, on the paint. I don't want the, uh, the Jeep to get painted as well. So we also want to uh, have some kind of ventilation. Um, so I'm gonna, I've got the garage door open on that side. I'm going to set up a fan blowing out. I also have a respirator and eye protection as well. One other thing you want to take into consideration is the weather. You don't want it to be rainy, you don't want it to be too humid, probably 50% uh, humidity or less to paint, and you also want the temperature to be just right, probably between, I don't know, uh, 50 and 90 degrees somewhere. You don't want it too cold, you don't want it too hot. Alright guys, so the next thing we want to do is clean the material. The first thing is to sand it down just a little bit, maybe with the 120 sandpaper. And basically you just want to rough it up a little bit, that's going to let the, the paint stick a little better. Okay guys, I've got it sanded down pretty good. While you're doing that, you want to check for any weld splatter or anything like that. Uh, I didn't see any on this. JCR does a really good job with their welds. But if you see anything like that, grind it off or sand it off. And the next thing we're going to do is grab the mineral spirits. Now you want to give this a good shake. And then you want to take your mineral spirits and put it on a rag. And then we're going to start wiping this down. This is going to take off all of the oils, all of the grease, and uh, just make it nice and clean. And you might want to wear some gloves for this too. Alright, these come pretty clean, but as you can see, there's a little bit of grease and, and dirt on there. Not dirt, but just oil to keep it from rusting. So we're going to take all of that off, put the mineral spirits, and then move on. Alright guys, I've cleaned it up really good with the mineral spirits. Uh, once it starts getting cleaner, you'll see that your rag uh, starts getting whiter and not as dirty as it did before. Then you're going to take a clean rag, and we're just going to make sure it's all dry. Alright guys, so I got that completely dry. Look how clean that is. All the, uh, the grime is off of there. So the next thing that we're going to do, if you have a tack cloth, you can go ahead and take that. And what the tack cloth will do is just get any of the little fibers that came off of your cloth on there and pick those up. I don't happen to have that, um, so I'm not going to worry about it. But the next thing you want to do is, is uh, tape off anything that you might need to mask with masking tape. Let's say you have some threads sticking out, you might want to tape those off so you don't get paint on those. Other than that, it's time to hang it up in the air because that's going to be the best way to paint it. So I'm going to hang it from the ceiling and we'll get to work. Alright guys, I've got it hung up here with some extra wire that I had lying around. Now the next step is going to be to prime it. You can use regular automobile primer if you'd like, but I'm going to use self-etching primer. Now the self-etching primer is a little bit nastier, so you want to use uh, a good respirator. And we're going to do this in three steps. Now the important part is to put this on in light coats. So you want to be really patient. We're going to stand back, just spray a really light first coat, and then a light second coat, and then a third coat. So I'm going to put my respirator on and do that.
All right guys, so I put a really light coat on there. You can barely even tell that I painted it at all, but that's what you want is a really light coat. We're gonna let that dry for about five minutes. Then we're gonna recoat it a second time, let that dry, then we're gonna recoat it a third time. Now check your paint can for the drying times, but this one happens to be about two to five minutes between coats. And then after the third coat, you wanna wait at least 30 minutes before you spray paint it. Okay, so check it out. That's probably more like four or five light coats, but it's finely coated. And um, it's really hard because it's backlit when you're looking up from the bottom. So you wanna get like a flashlight maybe or something and uh, make sure that you get all of the little nooks and crannies and check it over with the flashlight because you might have missed some spots. Also the edges right here, the little sharp edges are really hard to get. Um, so make sure you got everything and then we are going to go ahead and do the paint. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a very light coat and then at least two more coats until this thing is completely solid one color. We're going to use Rust-Oleum Black. Um, flat black works great or gloss black. I'm going to do this one in gloss black and most everything else is going to be flat black. Alright, so there's the first coat. I'm going to let that dry for a good 5-10 to 10 minutes, then we'll do a second coat. Now, I'm not an excellent pro spray painter or anything, but the key is to keep this thing moving, keep it at the same distance, usually about 12 inches or so. Also, get at it at every angle. Like, for instance, in here I want to come up a little higher because I'm going to have to hit the same spot multiple times. So I'm going to hit it at every angle from about uh, 18 inches or so. Uh, it's going to be really hard to get all the little crevices and everything, especially these little holes and whatnot. But if you get it at every angle, you should be able to get it. And whenever you have to hit it multiple times, just back up a little bit. Oh, and one more thing. You want to keep your can in motion, meaning every minute or so you want to shake it up real good. Alright guys, so that's three coats of paint right there. Now I'm going to let it dry for 24 hours and then we'll be good to go. Don't forget to check out this bumper and more at JCR Offroad's website at jcroffroad.com. Do check out my website at bleepinjeep.com where we've got hats, t-shirts like this one, and stickers. We've also got videos and more. So check it out, bleepinjeep.com. Do subscribe to both of our YouTube channels right here and our Facebook pages as well. Leave your comments below and we'll see you next time. I'm good? Yeah? Sword? Sword? JCR Off-Road, I accept your challenge. I will ride Jeep back into victory. I will tread lightly forward until dawn. I will Jeep softly and carry a big toe strap. Wait, I have one more. Ah yes. I will riddle the trails with off-road into the dark night. Okay, here I go.